Good morning, guys. It is 6.34 a.m. September 26, 2017. Uh, unfortunately, I am in a little bit of a rush this morning. Got to get to work, but uh, not without an update. Um, here we go. Here is Maria still making its northern approach. I am convinced this thing is still moving a little bit to the west, even though the west... Uh, part is not in even is not in the direction of it. It's just a north movement. But guys, this thing, um, if you line up the grid lines, you can actually see it is moving a little bit closer to the coast. I'm not saying that's going to be uh, anything really significant um, outside of what they've already predicted as far as the uh, storm surge and the wind and stuff like that. Uh, we are still going to deal with tropical force winds um, in the Outer Banks areas, guys. I don't think there's any way to avoid that at this point. Um, I think for the most part, people in that area are aware of what's coming to them. Um, again, that's why they got rid of the tourists and stuff like that, because they just don't, they're not paying attention to the weather when they're on vacation. Hopefully, some of the people in the area are letting them know and stuff like that. But again, guys, this is Maria. We are still dealing with a Cat 1 storm. Uh, she is down to 75 miles per hour, so that is good. It dipped back down to that 75 rather than 80. Can make a significant difference, believe it or not. The pressure has risen to 970, which is also good news. So, we just got to wait and see, guys. We got to see if this front wall is going to have any effect on Maria. Apparently, it's supposed to whip it out into the sea along with Lee, which is now a Category 2 storm, guys. 100 mile an hour sustained wind. So, uh, Lee is not a joke. Check that out. 85 knots, 100 miles per hour, 977. Um, if we see Lee drop any more south than really where it is, if we get below the 20 degree line, even 25 here, guys, where my mouse is, this is the 25 degree uh, north line, and here is up and down is the west. Uh, check it out. If it gets any below this, guys, we might have an issue with Lee. If Lee gets south down here, it could get pulled back into these western winds, this like belt that we've been watching where the hurricanes form over here, and then they're pushed over to the west by the uh, the shear winds and global winds, and then we have to deal with a hurricane, east coast, or gulf. So, guys, this is why I'm watching Lee. Um, not a lot of people talking about it. A couple channels are, which is good, but Lee is a significant hurricane. We're at 100 mile an hour sustained winds now. Um, if these two get close enough before this wall comes in, we could have another chance for a Fujiwara effect, where the two storms, when they get within 900 miles of each other, they begin to spin. Usually the bigger of the two survives. In this case, it would be Lee. Uh, Maria does have an expanding wind field, but it's not that strong of a storm right now. Um, it is for coastlines, don't get me wrong. This is something to be very aware about, and we just got to keep an eye on it, guys. So that's where we're at for now, at least with the storms. I'm going to have a full update when I get back from work. I'm sorry I'm in a rush, but I do want to show you something really cool I captured last night. All right, guys, so last night... I was actually, this was actually during the day yesterday I captured this. This is the uh, the Soho cams. You can go to soho.nascom.nasa.gov and you can watch these cameras and what they do is they backtrack in time. You can see in the bottom left corner here, this is September 23rd and then it moves forward until um, basically present time. So I was watching these yesterday during the day and check this out right there. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. You get it for like one or two frames because these cameras take a snapshot every 20 to 30 minutes, sometimes every 15 minutes. So when you see something, you don't really see it moving across the screen. You get a snapshot of it because the cameras, uh, they produce a time lapse, which is over three to four days. So you get like really quick snapshots of things. But check this out. Sometimes you catch some really cool stuff here. And really quick, this black arm here is actually a physical piece that is coming off the camera and it's holding a disc in front of the lens of the camera and that's to block the brightness of the sun so we can actually see what's going on around it and the corona of the sun um, has the, if this disc wasn't here we wouldn't be able to see anything it would be way too bright so this is actually a physical piece connected to the camera so if anyone's wondering what this blurry black line is that's actually an arm coming off the camera so I'm going to hit play here you're going to see the meteors flash across and then I'm going to show you the snapshot from it right about now there you go. I'm going to try to catch it here. It's a little hard to do sometimes. You can catch it in the video editing program, which is how I did it. All right, I don't want to make you guys waste your time, but here is the image right here. These are meteors passing. Some of them, yeah, these are between the, uh, the satellite camera that we're watching this from and then the sun. So they're in between there. You can see they go in different directions. You can almost make out some of the shapes they turn into their little balls here and then these are the t the tails of those meteors guys so um, we do have some activity going on in space again this is from the 23rd but I'm going to show you another one here 
This image is actually from the 26th. This was from basically a couple hours ago, guys. Look at the size of this thing. This passes uh, from the upper part of the screen. You can see it here. These are dual cameras. This is a negative version, and this is the, uh, the actual color version that you see. But guys, this is definitely something passing in between this camera and the sun. Look at this. You can catch it on the negative one on the right side here. And then right here, this may be a big meteor. It could be a piece of space junk. But nonetheless, this thing passed right in front of the camera, in between the camera and the sun. So I found that very interesting. And then guys, I went out last night, and I was able to capture my own meteor on a time lapse. I have caught these before, but this one was so bright. It actually brightened up two times. This was last night on the night of the 25th. Check this out. So these are airplanes right here. I set my my the, my uh, my shutter speed to be very slow, so it's recording uh, constantly. I set it for about 15 seconds, I think. So these are airplanes going across the sky. You could see the double lights from the wings. Um, these are the stars, obviously, and then you get some light distortion here because of the lights going around. I have a, a garage light that um, that caused some of these round things you see here. These, so dis uh, disregard those. But check this out. This is a meteor right here, guys. This thing flashed twice. I watched this. It started in this area. It got bright right there as it got. Uh, past the near the telephone pole and then it went through this way and then got bright again and this thing passed right behind not that it was anywhere near this airplane it just looked like it was but it passed right behind the trail of this airplane so this was really cool to see I can't seem to find it here I this may be it right here as we speak um, in the film um, again this was a time lapse I took a snapshot from it but guys yeah this is definitely a meteor this was last night this was September 25th 2017 and there you have it. There's a meteor. So maybe we do have some activity going on. This was another plane up here you can see with the pulsing lights. Those are airplanes when you do them over a time lapse. So there you go, guys. I do. I film the sky a lot. I get a lot of crazy stuff out there. But this is one of two, maybe three times I've caught meteors on a uh, camera. And this one, I told you, this thing got bright twice. It like it did it's almost like a shooting star. It got really bright and then beside rather than fizzling out, it got bright again. It got really bright here. This spot was really cool. Right there was the coolest spot. And I was saying to myself after I filmed, I was like, oh man, I hope I got that. I hope I caught that. And I did because I was filming these planes because they just make cool looking things when you're filming them in time lapse. And sometimes you get cool stuff. So there you have it. Uh, this was the moon last night. Came out pretty cool. I know you guys are used to the hurricane stuff, but I do other things too. This is a moon picture. I took this with my DSLR. Very cool shot. And then once again, guys, here are those other meteors we caught. This was from the 23rd, and this was from... Uh, literally this morning it's showing, uh, 926, 2017. So maybe we have a little meteor shower going on we don't know about. Uh, the 23rd showed multiple. This was one. Uh, there was actually another one. If you could see this, it's hard to see on this monitor here, but you could see it coming across this way, very close to the camera. Very interesting stuff, guys. So I'm going to check these out also when I get off work. And I think that's it for now. Actually, I want to show you a couple more things here. Um, I didn't touch on these when I was talking about the hurricane. I'm really sorry. So anyway, we have Maria here. We have Lee here. Uh, these are the current spaghetti plots for Maria still waiting for that uh, that jet stream U to come in, guys, and push this thing out. We're getting um, almost parallel with uh, Chesapeake Bay now before this thing gets pulled out. So it's moving more and more north, and I am convinced this thing is still inching towards the west. I am convinced of it. Again, not that it's going to do anything crazy, but look at Lee down here, guys. If Lee gets down into this area, see how this moisture is getting pulled south, and then this end is getting kind of pulled up to the northeast? If Lee can fit itself right in there, guys, we may be dealing with Lee coming down here as a full-blown hurricane and turning into an issue really quick. So we really need to keep an eye on Lee. This may, be, this may turn into something we don't want to see, guys. And here is Maria. Maria looks to be breaking up, but again, it's, it looks like to be shifting a little bit to the west. It just seems that way to me. And then all this activity down in the Mexico region, uh, the, south, the southern parts of South America. Look at all these storms blowing up, guys. And I was, I was telling you to look in this area. There's some cycle going on here. 
So we may have, a, and someone sent me an article. I want to thank them for that. I forgot their name. I'm so sorry. They sent me an article right after I put my video out yesterday talking about how most hurricanes in this time of year form in this area. And we were talking about Franklin and the possibility of tropical tidbits showing a major hurricane forming right here, going over Cuba, and then going right near the borders of Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, and North Carolina. So guys, this may be... Um, a far from overseas, and we just got to keep an eye on it. And Lee, Lee is a big deal now to me. The more further south Lee gets, the more of a concern it's becoming. Look, look how far down we're getting here, and we're still not getting that pull from the jet stream wall. So, guys, when I get home from work, I'm going to report on this. Um, it is significant, and I hope you enjoyed the meteors. I hope you enjoy the video, and we will talk very soon, guys. Thank you very much.